Entrepreneur on Fire, episode 379. If you're prepared to ignite, there's only one place to go. Entrepreneur on Fire with your host, John Lee Dumas. Looking for peace of mind when it comes to protecting your computer files? Go to Carbonite.com for a free trial and use the offer code FIRE. You'll get two free months if you decide to buy. Carbonite.com, offer code FIRE. Dozens of designers are waiting for you over at 99designs to work on your project right now. In just seven days, you'll have several designs to choose from. Visit 99designs.com slash FIRE and get a $99 power pack of services for free. Okay, Fire Nation, let's get started. I am simply thrilled to introduce my guest today, Jay Samet. Jay, are you prepared to ignite? Absolutely. Yes. Serial entrepreneur Jay Samet is host of the Wall Street Journal series Startup of the Year and president of Uvu, the world's largest provider of social video chat. An experienced entrepreneur, he has built global divisions for Universal Studios, EMI, and Sony, and teaches entrepreneurship at USC. I've given Fire Nation just a little overview, Jay, but take a minute. Tell us about you personally. We want to get to know you, and then give us an overview of what you have going on right now. Well, it's a pleasure to be here. I'm one of those born entrepreneurs, uh, the, the kid that always came up with businesses in elementary school and high school and paid his way through college. Uh, and my first really big insight was at the dawn of the, the computer era uh, 30-some years ago. I really saw that when people started using graphics for the first time on a computer, I knew it would be inevitable that video would be there. So I then started businesses around how do you get video, how do you get video onto a computer, et cetera, et cetera, and built uh, some very successful businesses that were acquired, I've taken business public, I've rolled up businesses. And each time I get more inspired as the world continues to change faster and faster, that there is endless opportunity for the entrepreneur. Endless opportunity. That is so true. And Jay, just give us a little personal angle about you, where you're from, family, anything you'd like to share. Grew up originally in uh, Philadelphia, uh, moved to California and went to uh, UCLA. Uh, My roommate, when I was in college, had a terminal to ARPANET, um, the, the precursor to the internet, and I was hooked. And I saw that this was going to change the world. I didn't realize how long it would take. Uh, But every time the computer advanced, there was something new that you could do, just as now with mobile and NFC. And it it continues to uh, get cheaper and cheaper to start businesses that can reach more and more people. Oh, it is so true, Jay. And we're going to dive way more into your journey, different huge ventures that you've been involved with later on in this interview. But before we do, we love starting Entrepreneur on Fire off with a success quote because it just gets that motivational ball rolling and gets people pumped up for this great content you're going to be sharing with us. So take it away. What I always tell everybody is you have a choice to be the best at what you do or the only one doing it. And if you're the only one doing it, by definition, you're the best. So I've always focused on trying to be the only one doing what I'm doing, to go out and blaze new new paths. And that way, even if you don't happen to get it all right, you're still the best in your field. And so whether that field was in you know, advertising online, uh, communication, or what we're doing now with social video chat with Uvu, Uvu has 85 million people doing over a billion minutes of video chat a month because we're the only ones that let you do group chat, let you talk, regardless of device, platform, et cetera, and we host it in the cloud. So it's HD quality video, and you can have two, three, four, 12 friends and see each other and share all of life's great moments. I love that, Jay. And again, we're going to dive more specifically into Uvu later on in this interview because there's just so many great things and so many great possibilities that surround what you have going on and the different strings that kind of fall off onto that. But what I want to do right now is really focus on your journey as an entrepreneur because as we've kind of alluded to, it's quite a journey. I mean, you were there at the dawn, literally before the dawn of the internet. You were there before the sun even rose and you saw the potential and you've been really finding great things to 
pour yourself into and to really be a great inspiration source for many people along the way. But it's not always successes and it's not always great times. We as entrepreneurs fail and we fail often, but we like to fail forward. And I want you to tell a story to Fire Nation about a time that you did fail and share with us that story, that moment and the lessons that you learned from it. In the mid 1990s, I launched a first website for college kids. It's called animalhouse.com. It was very similar to Facebook a decade before. It had voice over IP before Skype. It had web-based email before Hotmail or Gmail. It had everything that makes sense at the, and it was before broadband. So we were very, very early. But we very quickly got one out of four college kids to join and embrace this. And uh, I was uh, president of a division of Universal Studios at the time. And one day my boss came in and said, why are we doing this? We're an entertainment company. Why are we on the internet? Shut it down. Oof. And there was nothing that I could say that could explain to him what I knew was inevitable. And so what I learned from that was most times entrepreneurs have a spark, an idea, something that they need to fan to use your thing and, and build into a fire. And for the most part, you're listening to naysayers that tell you it's wrong. It doesn't make sense. It doesn't have anything. I can't see anything like that, whatever that may be. And your job is really one person at a time to convince people in a way that they understand. And when I was younger, in my 20s doing this, I used to say they don't get it. And it was the other person's fault. Now that I'm on uh, the wrong side of 40, I look at it a different way. It's my failure to communicate the vision of the future in a way that the present can understand. So, Jay, being such a serial entrepreneur that you are and were, at what point did you break away from the kind of events and the situation that you found yourself in where people could tell you to shut it down? At what point did you break away and become your own man, your own self, your own entrepreneur? So I'm a little bit different than most people. I got out of college at a time that there was a, a recession. No one was hiring. And I quickly found that I had these skills and no one would hire me. So what I did was I invested, my first business cost me $1. I went out and bought business cards that said I worked at a company. I didn't even make myself the head of the company. And I found out very quickly that I could sell the company and get hired to do things that none of these businesses would have hired me as an individual to do. Uh, where I ended up in corporate America is every time I built up a big company, it would be acquired by uh, a major uh, corporation. And they would set me up to, to build up a new industry. So at Universal, they wanted a games division at the time when my heart was already into the internet. At, at Sony, Sony wanted to compete with uh, iTunes after I had uh, worked with Jobs and others to license iTunes. So the entrepreneurial thing has always been to do it on my own. And when I'm inside a company, it's being an entrepreneur. So many times, you don't have to actually leave that big corporation uh, to start your own business, you can actually go to the corporation and say, I have a new idea that would you know, change their bottom line. So it's really about backing yourself. But security robs ambition. And as people get more and more secure in their, their corporate perks, they're more risk adverse. Uh, and as they have kids and a mortgage and everything else, going out there on your own you know, takes a lot of guts. And it's, it's better to be somebody that, that's tried and failed than to spend your whole life saying, what if I had? Jay, what a great insight. The security robs ambition. It is so true on so many levels. So many of my past guests for Entrepreneur on Fire, now over 350, have talked about that time that they had such a hard time breaking out of that golden handcuffs that they found themselves in and that they had this ambition, but the security was holding them back. And I also want to go back to another thing that you said earlier on when you were talking about failure and about how you have these naysayers. And that just brought to my mind a quote by Gandhi, which I love, and I think is so powerful for entrepreneurs. First, they ignore you. 
then they laugh at you, then they fight you, and then you win. And that is literally what entrepreneurs go through. We go through these cycles of being ignored at first because we're just not relevant, and then we're getting laughed at because people think it's a dumb idea, and then they fight us because they're threatened, and then guess what? You win. So Jay, what I want you to do right now for Fire Nation is break down just one clear lesson that you've learned from these trials and tribulations that you've been through that you think could be impactful for Entrepreneur on Fire listeners? The advice that I give, and again, I teach how to build a high-tech startup at USC, and, and I've been fortunate to be on the board to mentor many young entrepreneurs. And the one thing that I, I say is everybody has that aha moment, that epiphany, where they have a new business, a new idea, a new direction they want to go into. The very first thing that you should do is find 10 strangers that would benefit from that business, not relatives, not your grandma that's going to tell you it's a good idea, and really question them and, 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 and have them kick the tires and have them find out what's wrong because your job is to fail. And what I mean is you need that. to kill, stomp on and destroy every idea you can come up with. And if you can't kill it, that's the one that will make it all the way through. So the quicker you fail, the quicker you save your money, the quicker you move on to a path of success. So failure is at the heart of being a successful entrepreneur. And it's the one thing that, especially in the U.S., we embrace because most of your famous entrepreneurs failed. Um, when I first met uh, Bill Gates and Paul Allen, their first company had failed. Their second company was Microsoft. Um, you see this time and time again. Failure isn't a shame. Failure is part of the learning process. This is just pure gold that you're giving to Entrepreneur on Fire listeners right now because that is something that keeps so many people from starting is that fear of failure, but instead it needs to be embraced. When I first had my idea for Entrepreneur on Fire, which was to have the first seven day a week podcast, a lot of people said, John, that's a terrible idea. But I went out, I went to forums and LinkedIn and Facebook that were podcasting forums. And I asked people, do you feel like you need a podcast that has as much content as seven days a week? And I got that plus 10 people to come back to me and say, John, one thing that I struggle with are these podcasts that only come out once a week. And so I found that pain point and I found over 10 people that were willing to say, yes, they needed something more. So incredible insights for the listeners here about going out and finding that failure. And Jay, you also kind of alluded to the aha moment, the light bulb moment. And that's what I want to move into now. I mean, you've had an incredible amount of aha moments in your journey. I would love to sit here and talk about all of them, but instead just share with Fire Nation one light bulb that went off and the actions that you took to turn that idea, that aha moment into success. Sure. I'll give you an example of just a couple years back. All of a sudden, there was a phenomenon going on that social media was expanding and exploding and Facebook and games online and everything. But advertising had basically fallen short. Advertising was basically banners. It was the same thing as a billboard or a, a display ad in an ad. And you were more likely to be hit by lightning than to click on a banner. So advertising was failing as a medium. And it was accounting for less than 1% of, of brand spend. So my aha moment was when I saw that, that Farm Bill had come on and had been so popular with people. And yet, 98, 99% of the people would never pay to play, even though they loved the game. So my aha moment was, what if at that moment when you decided that you couldn't play the game anymore, you were out of farm, farm dollars or, or whatever their, their unit was, what if I put in front of you an offer that said, watch this ad and we'll give you more currency to play the game? Oh. As if you were playing a pinball machine and you're out of balls, but if you watch this ad from McDonald's, we'll give you one more. And so that became what is now known as value exchange advertising. And within the first year, we had signed up as clients uh, virtually all of the Fortune 500. Procter & Gamble, Coke, Pepsi, Toyota, Disney, Microsoft, every major brand spending millions and millions of dollars. And we were engaged with 300 million people a month that would take a minute out of their day right at that moment. And they said, yeah, oh, thank you, brand, for doing this. They enjoyed the ad because it made their life better. And this went from you're at an airport and they want to charge you, you know, money to get on the internet to check your email or engage uh, with nationwide insurance and get get it for free. So that aha moment really fundamentally changed how advertising is now done 
uh, on the internet today. I love that aha moment. And I have such a recent example. I was just traveling from the East Coast back to the West Coast. There I am at Baltimore's airport, BWI. I go to jump on the internet and I said, hey, if you want to be on the internet for 30 minutes, join.me will cover your cost. Just watch this 45 second video. And I sat there and I enjoyed the video. And now when join.me comes to mind, I get kind of a warm and fuzzy because they gave me 30 minutes of internet browsing time. They made my time at BWI much more enjoyable. And I was more than happy to do that. So it makes a ton of sense. I'll tell you something else that they did that you didn't realize, and this is why we were so successful at airports, is if you were a big, uh, an employee of a big corporation, you don't care because that would have been a business expense and you wouldn't have done that ad. So that's how we know we can hit the, the entrepreneur, the small business owner, the mis- medium business owner. And that becomes super powerful for copiers, for supplies, for all kinds of businesses uh, that are looking, how do we find those people online? And now you volunteered uh, to, to raise your hand and say, it's me. It's me, Jay. So true. Man, I just love aha moments. They're really my favorite part of every entrepreneur's journey. Although I do really like hearing about the failures too, for the reasons that you said, because that's a mandatory part of the journey that propels us forward and pivots us in a new and other direction. So Jay, what I'd like to talk about now is a question that I like to ask my guests here on Entrepreneur on Fire because it always elicits such a range of answers. Have you had an I've made it moment? Yeah. I mean, I vividly can think of one that was pretty impressive oh, let's hear it. to me. So uh, I had left uh, the music labels and had, had basically taken music into the digital era with digital downloads and streaming radio and all of that. And suddenly Sony, which was... This, uh, one point, the number one brand in the world was falling way behind Apple when I was brought in to launch a competitor to iTunes. And you're sitting and saying, iTunes so well known, so established. How do I, you know, how do I compete? And to do the story quite short, uh, we built a competing service, did everything that we should. And we tied in two promotional partners for the launch. One was McDonald's, buy a Big Mac and get a free track. So we got 20 million customers nice. the first week. Uh, but the other was the moment that you're referring to was to launch this. You have to captivate the world's media to get attention. And so I came with this wacky idea of holding the first ever rock concert at 35,000 feet with Sheryl Crow performing on a United flight from Chicago to L.A. And I filled the, the plane with journalists and reporters from the different news. And we shot it with nine cameras and edited in air. And I'm sitting there on the back of the plane watching all this happen flawlessly. And you just have that, wow, this is as good as it gets. You come up with a wacky dream and you convince one person and the next and the next and you know that you made it. I mean, I've I've been so lucky to have so many of those. I I partnered with a project with uh, Pope John Paul. I've been partnered with Spielberg and Geffen. I mean, these amazing, amazingly successful people. And... It makes you want to just continue to give back, and that's why I I teach entrepreneurship. I write about it. I I believe that entrepreneurs need a constant, steady stream of advice and inspiration, and that's why I tweet uh, several inspirational things every single day, much like you do. So you can follow me on Twitter, at jsamit, J-A-Y-S-A-M-I-T, and it's my way of giving back for, for having been so blessed to have been so lucky. Well, Jay, you have been blessed to have so many I've made a moments and such a plethora of these great aha moments. So let's just boil this down to kind of close out this section of the I've made it and the aha moments. Share with Fire Nation just one clear lesson that you've experienced as an entrepreneur about the aha moments, about the I've made a moments. Because so much of the struggle to get the ball up the hill for the entrepreneur is is a solo focus one member, you just believing in yourself, we often forget that it takes a whole team and that to really get to size and scale, you're going to have to be a Pied Piper and get a whole lot of people to follow you. So the present big aha moment off of that is, so here we have this very successful Uvu doing tremendous, it's one of the top 100 apps in 130 countries around the world. Tens of millions of people are using it, but it's not enough. It can do so many more things than my 100 plus employees could ever do. So we took all of our engineering, all of our hard work, 
and opened up an SDK. So you could put video chat into uh, video poker. You put video chat into online dating. You put it into shopping sites. You can put it into almost any application. So now the aha moment of that is have what you, you built and figure out how to make it a multiplier, how to get other people to be able to raise their funds and their dreams to work with you. And that's the only way that you really build billion dollar companies. And I've been fortunate to do that several times now. And it's all about getting the rest of the world to follow by giving them the incentive to do so. And so that's why we, we opened our software's developers kit and some of the applications being developed and some of the people working with us, major sports leagues that want to allow fans to talk to each other while they watch the games. I mean, just great ideas that would have never occurred to me, but that we get to play a part in by, by giving them the tool set. Jay, these are just some incredible insights. You're really making me want to drive up the coast to sit in on some of these great entrepreneurship courses that you're kicking off here at USC. And man, beyond that, you have so many other great things going on. Left, right, up, down. It seems like you're everywhere. You have your hands in so many different pies. I'd love to know how you do it. But what I want you to share with Fire Nation right now is one or two things that are just really exciting you right now, today. If I was starting a business today, the, the, you follow demographic waves. You follow what are the trends that are inevitable, and then how much of that can you grab or can you surf? And so two things that really excite me on the horizon 3D printers are fundamentally going to change the supply chain and the concept of manufacturing from everything from automotive to medical to, to everything in between. So I'd really look at that. And whether it's, it's 3D printing in food or human organs or metal or structural, it's just an amazing revolution. And it'll follow the same models and the same businesses that grew up around digital goods like music and video. So you have a clear path of how and where you can play. The other one is, as many people as we've had on the internet to date, billions, that's what the B, billions more are joining the internet. And through, I don't refer to humans joining the internet, it's all of our devices. So near field communication will basically turn every barcode out there into a, a connected way of talking to the internet. So we'll know proximity of every person to every product, to every location. And the number of businesses that can grow out of that are exponential and truly exciting. And if we had more time, I'd, I'd tell you some of the fun stuff I'm seeing out there. And the intersection of, of social and, and communication. For the first time since 1876, the number of minutes of audio phone calls went down in the U.S. Wow. The most annoying thing you can do to millennials is leave them a voicemail. So... The idea that we're fundamentally changing between text and video, how we communicate, the frequency, what that is, that's, again, will completely change the world as we know it, the, the, the AT&T and Verizon's and that whole play. Uh, new chipsets coming out of Qualcomm and Intel uh, are changing what devices can do and how they can do it. And it is so inexpensive with, with cloud hosting, with SaaS software, with the fact that you're one click away from a billion people that can buy something from you. When we launched eBay, the whole idea to get a person to buy something from a stranger was unheard of. So it's, it's one of those great moments again where everything's going to change and I want to be a part of it. I still have that same energy as I did as a kid. And what's really fun is now I have a little bit of track record. So whether it's my idea or whether an entrepreneur comes to me with an idea, I know who to bring it to. I've raised over $800 million for startups in my career. And it's just really fun to just watch people's dreams come true and being able to help them. Wow, Jay, there are just so many great insights throughout that little spiel that you gave that I'm having a hard time focusing on any one in particular, but the one that does stand out, because I do find it kind of amusing, is that millennials get frustrated listening to voicemails. And I'm having a constant battle, being a millennial myself, with my parents about them always leaving voicemails and me having to go through this entire process of listening to one, because you're exactly right. It's frustrating, and it's just not what us as millennials in generations lower than us are doing. But John, break it down and you'll see the insight for building every great business. So the insight was 
you grew up at a time where you had choices for communication. Your parents didn't. And so talking to a voice that you can't see the other one, you don't know if they're angry. I mean, if I'm, ask any married couple, if they, if they read a text, I'm fine from their wife, they don't know what it means. If they saw her face, they'd know exactly that they were in trouble. Uh, so the fact that you had choices between text, which is asynchronous and very efficient, you can say exactly what you want, know the other person got it, even if they didn't get it at the same time, versus the call me, call me back, leave a message, call me back, oh, now we finally connected, which makes absolutely no sense, but it was a habit. So look at the generations that are developing new habits and how you can monetize those. And you also have to look globally. So in countries where you can pop up one antenna and be in 4G in an afternoon, like South Korea or Singapore, you'll see whole new services developed that aren't here because it takes forever for enough people to get 4G. And with each new new change, you'll see old habits that don't need to be sustained will disappear when new generations have a choice. Pure gold. And you're right. If we did have more time, we could dive way more into a number of these topics because they're all fascinating. But unfortunately, the band must go on. And we're going to take just one minute to thank our sponsors. We recently started a new community at Entrepreneur on Fire called Podcasters Paradise. After we decided on the content and the platform we were going to use, we started thinking about a new logo. So where do we go? To 99designs.com slash fire, of course. 99designs is the number one marketplace for crowdsourced graphic design. Once we signed up, we had dozens of designers that worked on our logo, and in just seven days, we walked away with a design we absolutely loved. Here's how it works. Tell 99designs what you need. Dozens of designers from their community will submit quality designs created just for you. Give the designers your feedback to help them refine their designs and then select and pay for your favorite. It's really that easy. You can start your next graphic design project for as low as $199 and get a $99 power pack of services for free today by going to 99designs.com slash fire. I've been looking at ordering t-shirts online so I can give them away to Fire Nation at conferences and events because I love you guys that much. I could easily order t-shirts for as little as $3 each. Pretty cheap. But I know if I go that route, the quality will suffer. And you know I'm all about quality. So I searched for a company who could print on American Apparel brand t-shirts because not only do I know they feel great, but I also know they're a great quality and will last a long time. I can rest assured that when I get those t-shirts, they're going to be great quality. It's peace of mind. If you're looking for the same kind of quality and peace of mind when it comes to protecting your computer files, then go to Carbonite.com for a free trial. Use the offer code FIRE and you'll get two months free if you decide to buy. When you combine peace of mind with quality, you get Carbonite. Carbonite Carbonite.com, offer code FIRE. And you'll get two months for free when you decide to buy. We've actually reached my favorite part of the show, which is the lightning round. And this is where I get to provide you with a series of questions and you come back at us Fire Nation style with amazing and mind-blowing answers. Sound like a plan? I'll try my best. (laughs) What was holding you back from becoming an entrepreneur? The only thing that held me back was, was capital. And you learn over time that raising capital is a challenge, not in the sense of raising the capital, but in challenging you to articulate your idea clearly and concisely, and the money will will follow. What is the best advice you've ever received? The best advice that I ever received was the one I gave at the beginning, which was be the best at what you do or the only one doing it. And I really broke that down to be the only one, and eventually you get lauded as being the best. Can you share one of your personal habits, Jay, that you believe attributes to your success? I'll tell you two, and, and they're, they're not by choice. I, I don't <laughs> sleep. I tend to need, you know, three, four hours sleep, and that's it. So that gives me tons of time to do lots of reading, lots of writing, lots of exploring, lots of stuff that other people just don't seem to have the time for. Uh, the, the other is I have the inquisitive nature of a three-year-old. I I tend to look at everything with the question of why. And if the why doesn't make sense, then there's an opportunity. So find big problems in your everyday life. Find things that annoy you. Find things that you go, I can't believe this. 
And that's where your next business should come from. Oh, love that. Do you have an internet resource like an Evernote, like an Uvu that you're just in love with you can share with our listeners? I mean, we're all addicted to, to Google. We're, we're one click away from the world's in, information. I, I, I give a shout out to uh, uh, an, an app and site called Buffer that allows those of us that tweet a lot to schedule out our tweets, whether they're on LinkedIn or Twitter or Facebook. So it allows us to schedule out our posting. So uh, shout out to Buffer. Buffer and Fire Nation. You can find the links to this resource and everything that we've mentioned thus far in today's episode at eofire.com slash jsamet. Jay, if you could recommend just one book for our listeners, what would it be? It's the one that's coming out by me next year. Um, but in the short term, uh, I, I'd either go with uh, The Lean Startup, uh, probably a good place uh, to read nowadays of, of how little dollars it takes uh, to really start a business. But all the, all the classics, you know, How to Win Friends and Influence People from Dale Carnegie, uh, Stephen Covey's uh, Highly Effective People, you know, uh, Principles of Success by Canfield. There's a lot of good books out there. Uh, but for, for most people, you want to get motivation and either follow somebody on Twitter that can keep you motivated because it, it, is, a, it, it is a lonely quest at the beginning of every journey. You go out there alone. You don't know whether you're crazy, and you probably are, <laughs> but you can be crazy rich. And the fact that I can look at dozens of friends that have become billionaires is shocking when I grew up as a kid in the inner city of Philadelphia, son of a school teacher. So I've watched those that don't give up make it all the way. Uh, And we now live in an era where it is not uncommon for self-made billionaires in their 20s to exist. Uh, Zuck is not alone. Uh, And when I look what's going on in in China, uh, I just came back from Mumbai, India. This fire is spreading all over the world. And when you look, if I can just get political, yeah. philosophical for a second, when you look at the, the protests happening in the Arab Spring, when you look what's happening in Turkey and Greece, you're looking at those under 30 having 30 to 50 percent unemployment. That's instability for countries and that's instability for the world. The only job growth that's come since 2008 depression has come from entrepreneurs. Big businesses are getting more efficient and leaner and hiring less people. So the only way we're going to save our society as we know it is by creating our own opportunities. So we should salute the entrepreneur, whether they uh, fail or not. It's all part of the process of solving life's problems and making a better world. So whether it is global warming, whether it is how to make a better uh, set of headphones, uh, you're employing people, uh, you're making the world a better place. So bravo to the entrepreneur. Well, Jay, my goal every single day, seven days a week at Entrepreneur on Fire is to salute the entrepreneur. I love that Lean Startup book recommendation you gave. We've had Eric Reese on the show, just an inspiring entrepreneur who really lays out a great methodology for all aspiring entrepreneurs. And Fire Nation, if you haven't already, you can actually get the audio version of this book for free at eofirebook.com. That's eofirebook.com. And Jay, this next question, it's my favorite, but it's kind of tricky. So take your time, digest it, and then come back at us with an answer. Imagine you woke up tomorrow morning in a brand new world, identical to Earth, but you knew no one. You still have all the experience and knowledge you currently have, your food and shelter taken care of, but all you have is a laptop and $500. What would you do in the next seven days? In essence, every time I come up with a new idea, I am starting from scratch because I have to be known in a new world. So I'll give you a concrete example. Sure. Four years ago, I woke up with an epiphany that was the same as what you just described. I said, here I have an advertising network that I talked about earlier, and there's a new client that's only going to exist for six months, but they're going to spend a billion dollars. How do I get them? And that client was the presidential campaign. Okay? I don't know anybody there. And so what I started to do was tweeting, writing, posting, writing for magazines. Everybody will take free columns out there and explaining how the last election was going to be won uh, through use of the internet and digital targeting and value exchange advertising. And within 
uh, 60 days of doing that, I had four presidential candidates, one from the Democrats, Barack Obama, and three from the Republicans, each of whom said, if you work for anybody else, you, I won't hire you. I said, well, then I guess you're going to be the one person not hiring me. And I basically <laughs> had a tremendous influence on the election by being able to give targeting and tools that had never existed before. And those that use them the greatest uh, won the election. And this went down not just at the presidential level, but down at, at Congress seats, uh, lobbying groups, uh, special interests. It was absolutely fascinating to sit there as if I just had a laptop and said, I want to reinvent politics. Can we now, do we have the tools to reach anybody? You can go on LinkedIn and find anybody that you want to talk to. You can have forums on almost any topic that you can link into. You can meet people like yourself that, that multiply and broadcast what you say. And, and Twitter for me, it was amazing because you see who's following you and go, wow, the campaign manager for, for Romney just started following. I must be saying something that's getting noticed. And so anybody has this ability. You don't need to own ABC or NBC or CNN to have your voice heard. And we see this when you look at, at as I mentioned, the Arab Spring revolutions across countries that didn't take a single bullet, all because the power of the people to connect through social, to use tools like Uvu to see each other, to coordinate. It's amazing. And we can do this for NGOs. We can do this for profit. We can do this for almost any cause out there. And so I don't buy the excuse from somebody. I don't know anybody. I don't buy the excuse. I don't have any capital. I didn't go to the right school. I don't have this or that. You know, I was a skinny little kid in Philadelphia who believed I could make this. Everybody that I know that's built their, their companies uh, didn't do it because their dad was somebody or they're related. They did it because they believed and they didn't stop believing. Jay, I love that. And I can echo that sentiment because just a year ago today when I launched Entrepreneur on Fire, I literally did know nobody. But in this course of the year, I've talked, including yourself, to some amazing entrepreneurs because you can just go out there and start making connections because the ability is there for everyone. And I have really enjoyed hearing your journey, Jay, your insights, pure gold. Share with Fire Nation just one parting piece of guidance, then the best way that we can connect with you, and then we'll say goodbye. Well, the best way to reach me, I'm easy to find on social media. You can uh, link to me on LinkedIn, on Facebook, but uh, I tweet the latest news and the best entrepreneurial advice that I can come across at Jay Samit, J-A-Y-S-A-M-I-T. And I love to hear from entrepreneurs all over the globe. I give speeches all throughout Europe and Asia and uh, would love to meet any of your listeners face to face and, and help them any way I can. Love that, Jay. And what's one parting piece of guidance? I always tell people the best time to start your business was a year ago. The second best time is now. Jay, Fire Nation is well aware. They can find the links to everything of value that we've talked about in today's episode at eofire.com. Click on the podcast tab. You are hanging out in the archives. Type in Jay in our search bar and your show notes page will come out with your contact information, your book, your resources, everything that we've talked about. And Jay, thank you for being so generous with your time, your expertise and experience. Fire Nation salutes you and we'll catch you on the flip side. Thank you. Take care, John. John Gabriel weighed 409 pounds and was supposed to be on the United Flight 93 on September 11th, but by pure chance, he was not. That day, John committed to changing his life. Soon, he discovered that the real causes of his weight gain were mental and emotional stresses, and he developed the Gabriel Method, an approach that helped him lose over 200 pounds. Today, John is giving away his best-selling book for free at freegabrielmethodbook.com. Entrepreneurs, we need to learn to take care of ourselves. Thank you so much for joining us today on Entrepreneur on Fire. Head on over to eofire.com for full recaps of every show, our amazing blog articles and resources, and just plain fun. Your entrepreneurial journey awaits, so prepare to ignite.